Good evening and welcome to the Speaker MC Show where it's all about relationships. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Marcia Chambers, aka Speaker MC, and I'm your host for this evening. If you are new to the show, let me give you some background info. The Speaker MC Show, it's all about relationships, how we relate to ourselves, to our environment and to others. It's 60 minutes of non-scripted, free-flowing conversation with me and two guests. And we explore a specific topic on three different levels. What's the current relationship issue? How do we identify it? We dig deep to discover what's the root of the issue. And then we offer some tips and solutions so that when you recognize the problem, you say, hey, I got it from the Speaker MC show that I can do this. Okay, all right, so our topic tonight is she's my boss. Hmm, how we deal with female CEOs and how female CEOs communicate with the rest of the world. Yeah, we're gonna explore that. That's gonna be pretty interesting. But before I introduce our guest tonight, let me just do some housekeeping. I need your undivided attention. And I just wanted to bring to the forefront that the intention of the show is for you, the audience, to empower and enlighten you by creating harmonious environments and boosting your self-confidence. We're gonna provide that kind of information. And to our guests, we promise to provide an opportunity to share this message with another sphere of influence that's totally foreign to yours. And to everyone, hey, just to have some fun. All right, can you do that? Can we do that? All right. So let's talk about our show tonight. I'm gonna to share some slides here. Let's share my screen. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yes. So tonight, as I said, it's the Speaker MC Show, and we're talking about She's My Boss. We're talking about women in authority, the effective communication, the self-esteem that's involved, all of this stuff. And I'm going to give you some stats that are going to make you say, wow, yeah, watch out. And as I said, the main focus is for everyone to have fun. We talk about fun. You learn more when you're having fun. That's my philosophy anyway. Yes. And she's my boss, women in authority. So I saw this slide and I thought it was so apropos for mm -hmm. our topic tonight. He asked me, what's your favorite position? I said, CEO. Boom. Yes. There's so many connotations that can be taken away from that one. And we're going to explore that later too. <laughs> so we're going to discuss how the problem, what the problem is, how it manifests and some solutions. We're going to talk about the challenges that are faced by female CEOs mm, and some of the root issues that are involved. We're gonna talk about how do these challenges show up in our daily communication, home life, work life, and we're gonna offer some solutions. And then toward the end, our guests are going to share for five minutes about themselves, their businesses, and what their offering is. Yes, they brought you gifts, that's right. <laughs> Make it funner, of course. That's right. Make it funner. So our first guest is the uncomfortable Miss Janine Macedo. Macedo. Did I say Macedo. that right? Macedo. Yes, you got it. Yes. Yes. Janine, Either one of those two were good. Either one. Okay, great. Yeah. Janine is a speaker, coach, and founder. I'm trying to move this thing here so I could see. And founder of Magnetic Confidence and Courageous Me. Yes, yes, transformational programs. And she reigns from the San Francisco Bay Area. Yes. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Bay Area. Yeah, That's I'm loving right. the weather over here right now. <laughs> oh, well, we're burning up over here on the East Coast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 95 outside, and I did not turn um, on the AC, so I'm like, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That'll, that'll keep you in your, moving around in your seat even more then. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Janine's area of expertise is working with millennial women, aspiring entrepreneurs, to get out of their overwhelming toxic thought patterns through emotional mindset. Yes. 
Yeah. Janine yeah. is passionate about helping fellow millennial women to bust through their fears, get unstuck, and become unstoppable through their mindset and self-discovery techniques. Wow, that is phenomenal. Yeah. As yeah. a transformational life coach and confidence and empowerment coach to millennial women, she knows that the key to unleashing one's full potential is our mindset. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. So we'll talk about her free offering later on tonight, but say hello to Miss Janine Macedo. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much, Marsha, for the opportunity. This is really, really exciting. I honestly, it's just like, I thought, I knew I was going to be excited, but this is really setting the bar high. So woo Hey, everybody. <laughs> Thank well, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and next up, oh my gosh. So talk about global. We are so global, it's ridiculous. We are talking to someone who's all the way on the other side of the pond at, in Scotland. Yes, Miss Carly Dawson. Hello, yeah. Carly. All right. I'll get, I'll get my bagpipes out and start giving you a wee jig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get my on, you know? <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. Uh -uh. Carly's area of expertise is self-confidence and manifesting. Ooh, uh, Lordy. Magic. Carly <laughs> inspires and motivates and coaches people to shatter their self-imposed limitations, believe in their dreams, and transform their wildest desires into a new reality. Woo! Let's put our hands together. Welcome, Carly! Woohoo! Yay, Carly! Woohoo! Yay, lovely to meet you, Janine, and thank you, Marcia, for this opportunity. This is, I know this is going to be really fun. I'm loving the energy already, so Woo! I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, yes. me too, me too, me too! <laughs> And of course, you guys might be wondering, who is this crazy woman on the, on, the, on, the, on the screen? Well, it's me. My name is Marcia Chambers, AKA Speaker MC. I'm an online media personality and the executive producer of this show, The Speaker MC Show, which airs Mondays at 9 p.m. Not every Monday, you gotta watch the calendar. And also, the S-W-E-L-L -L, Happy Half, The Art of Communication. That's a monthly private women's affair, actually, our event is going to be on Wednesday, the 14th of June. So watch out, watch out. It's at 8 p.m. Mm. I am a speaker and a sexual wellness consultant. My message shares information to women about having better sex and intimacy so that they give themselves permission to be sensual and sexual and begin mm. to lead empowered lifestyles. Because my mission reason why i'm here in this world is to reduce the world's divorce rate by 50 percent and that's why i created s-w-e-l-l -L for women because i saw people exchanging dna and not asking the right questions and then subjecting the rest of us to their dysfunctions yeah, yeah. so that's why i'm here and later on you'll hear a little bit more about the rest of us so stay tuned so that's who we are all right i'm gonna stop sharing the screen right now just so that we can have it all to ourselves. And see me sweating? Oh my gosh, I'm just sweating. Just hot. <laughs> oh, we need some background music for that. I know, right? <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> Leave your hat on. Yeah. Leave so, the hat on. That's right. Ladies, I did some investigating with regard to. <clears throat> women and women CEOs. Now, women, they have donated, and I say donated because that's what we spend, $2.5 trillion to the global economy. $2.5 trillion. But I'm looking at my little notes here. Out of the 501 million women that are in the world, 56 are world leaders out of 146 nations. 15 women are currently, of those 56, 15 of them are currently in office, actively in office now. And as of April 25th, 2017, 
there are 29 women, which is 5.8% globally, who are CEOs in companies that are on listed on the S&P 500. Now, what the hell? I mean, there are 501 million of us. We contribute $2.5 trillion to the world economy, but yet and still, we don't have any leadership. We have little representation as far as leadership is concerned. What is up with that picture? What do you guys have to say? I think that the numbers are so little. Um, I mean, hearing those numbers, those statistics that you're sharing um, is very eye-opening and a little bit uh, disruptive to like, you know, the way I believe in woman empowerment. Um, and I think that those numbers are really on the rise. Um, there's so many more women leaders coming forward and just awakening to who they truly are. I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I've known um, the world to be changing, you know, just from the past three years being in business, um, I think that those numbers are really changing. But again, it all just falls back to um, the traditional basis of women not being like a boss, women not really, you know, rising to their potential, women being more of like household um, leaders, pretty much like, you know, women at home. And so I think that that's really changing. But again, it all has to do with the traditions from um, and our conditioning from what we were raised with and how we were brought up. And it's just so much more of, um, you know, the man being the earner, the man being the solution, the man being the provider. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that mindset is more spread than we want to acknowledge. Um, however, I think that that is changing. Hmm. Well, just, just reflecting on, and this is from the U.S. standpoint, we try to put a woman in power to match the other 146 countries, right? Other 56 countries, rather. And it was so shot down. And even in the aftermath, mm -hmm. to hear some of the conversations, it was kind of appalling. I mean, yeah. is misogyny still alive and kicking? Or mm -hmm. is it that we as women are just lacking certain confidences? And I know you ladies both, well, we all teach self-empowerment. Right. And it stems out from the self empowerment right and, so carly yes. what what would you suggest are is is probably part of this problem besides the blatant misogyny i mean yes. if, if if there's a misogynistic environment can a woman now stand to i don't know stand up to that um combat that uh, be recognized? I mean, do you see that as the main core problem, the misogyny, or is there something else? Well, the, the way I see it, and, and I look at things in a very broad spectrum, but I loved what Janine said about women being leaders in their own home, because being a mother of three children, and you're both mothers, am I right? You, are you both mothers? Yeah. yeah. It's like, we take on the, the role of CEO, like, in many different areas of our life. Like, women are actually equipped if anything, to be leaders and at home, so also in the workplace. And we work at tribes and communities much more than what men do as well. So, we're, so it is interesting that um, the masculine that men have effectively uh, over time been in that position of power. However, what I believe and what I know about manifesting, which comes into this, is, and you'll know this as well, Marcia, because you are uh, an Abraham Hicks follower, is about contrast. So I, I feel like, I've seen a huge shift recently, and like what you said as well, Janine, I've been in the online space with uh, the female entrepreneur space for years now, and I've really seen a rise in women owning, uh, really stepping into the, the boss, that version of themselves, but realizing that the contrast is causing a desire in them to really be, uh, take control of this, be their own boss, which I think is better if women as well are taking responsibility and creating employment for others and creating you know, new solutions in the world. Yeah. See, so I'm glad that you said that because according to, 
what's her name? I, I can never remember her last name. Dr. Luann, I call her. It's Dr. Luann Brizendine. Yeah, she wrote The Female Brain. And she spoke about how the female brain was much more equipped in the uh, hippocampus region, you know, where emotional and memory and how we're, we have 11% more neurons. So it, in a sense, in that aspect, we are better, right? Well, not saying that we're better than men because nobody's better than anybody, but we, those are our attributes and those attributes should work for us. Why aren't they working for us? And what I was trying to get at, yeah, besides the misogyny and besides the environment being the way it is, and yes, we are CEOs in our own households, why aren't we sticking together? Part of what I, I teach in Swell is for women to start trusting other women and kind of unite on a united front. Why aren't we doing that more? That's my question to you guys. Yeah, so <clears throat> my answer to that is, <sighs> limitations. We really have this process of thinking, especially nowadays, where there is so much to compare yourself to. Mm. It is disheartening, really, to fall into that downward spiral of compare, compare, compare to other, you know, to your neighbors, to your peers, to people online that you, that you admire, um, you know, mentors that you are looking to maybe follow their footsteps, just people that you are looking, I don't want to say up to, but unfortunately, you know, we do look up to them, but I see it as looking to them. Like you want to see them in front of you, not above you. Um, but I think that's the problem that people see them above, um, you know, where they are women, we see other leaders, other mentors above where we are. Therefore we put ourselves down in that instance. And I really do think that the comparison trap is very, very dangerous. And I, in my experience with my own clients and, you know, with other um, peers as well that I've, that I've came across. And even in my own experience, you know, when I, before I came to the realization of like what I just described about, you know, not looking up to them, but looking to them for mm -hmm. inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was really a hard time for me um, where I couldn't really step into my power. I couldn't really take, put on my CEO hat as easily as I would have liked. Um, and, you know, it's funny because one of the things that did help me once I did create this awareness and realize, okay, I'm going to look to these people for inspiration. I don't know what they've been through. Mm -hmm. um, and really when you see where they are and where you are, you forget what's in between. You forget to measure what maybe they have been through. Maybe they went through, you know, a, 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 most likely a path similar to yours or even way harder than, you know, than your path in your current path. Um, and one thing that really helped me, believe it or not, is uh, some people call it like put your big girl panties on you know some people would say that but to me I created a mantra where before I sat down to work I told myself and this is interesting um, because it really relates to this topic to our conversation um, you know male energy is good in business and I really just kind of sat down and, and that helped me focus just really it, it's true I talked to a coach and I said hey I'm a little bit all over the place I don't know you know where to pull my my um, my confidence from sometimes like I'm a little mm -hmm. scattered and so she told me male energy is really good in business so I kind of created this mantra where oh, wow. I said that to myself it's true yeah and then I put that aside and she even told me um, create an intention around that. And I don't know if this is kind of steering off a little bit, you know, further along where we're supposed to be, but she told me maybe wear a scarf, have something that you know that that is your business hat. And she told me to wear it as exactly right. As, um, <laughs> as not as testosterone, but again, male energy where she said that it's more, um, directive. It's more, um, focused, if you would, why I think is because our brains, and we touched on this a little bit is that they are, everything is connected to everything and we're more sensitive and we're more emotional, I think than men are, and they have an off switch and we don't have that switch as easily as they do. Um, 
is what I really believe. So really that, that mantra for me was being able to turn the switch on the business hat on and then switch off to everything else that I had to do as a woman so, and a mom. I like that you brought that into the forefront about the energy, the male energy. Now, Carly, I want to ask you this. So business we know is male dominated or it has been male dominated. It's, it's turning okay. the tides. It's turning the tides slowly, but for what we know, it's been male dominated. Now as a woman stepping into those panties or into those shoes, do we now have to exert this male testosterone like um, men in skirts? Well, I know you have men in skirts in Scotland, but <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally, <laughs> literally. But do do women now have to adapt that kind of energy where they're adapting that masculine energy and they're coming off as real aggressive and real strong? I mean, is that really necessary? I know that's not what you were saying, Janine, but based upon the environment is that what women are now going to start i don't know adapting because it's expected or because they have to mm -hmm. well i think it's different when you're talking about the the feminine and the masculine energy because the masculine energy is very is very much a supportive energy whereas the feminine is very much about the creation the dream and um, the masculine is very much what would support the dream so it would be the actions if you're an online business it would be the structural work it would be um the, the sort of processes and the systems so in terms of energy that's what that would look like but within yourself i think that it's easy as women to get too far into our feminine and that's something that i did where i um basically dreamed and meditated too much without actually implementing the action and that kept me stuck actually for a long time because um one of the reasons why i'm teaching about, uh, passionate about teaching manifesting is because that that did trip me up i did not bring in that the masculine energy which was the okay go and do now like implement go and take action when you get that inspired download don't wait for it to come knocking like actually go so as women entrepreneurs or even if you're just thinking about um getting into a leadership role yes like action is everything and i think that we do need to have like we can look at men and 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 look at that assertiveness and that almost like arrogance that they take but also be very grounded and very feminine in it and be very much like owning who you are as a as opposed to you know a false arrogance well i like that too i like that i like that a lot and i agree with that mm -hmm. um you touched on owning who you are and janine i know you teach a lot about confidence yes and if a woman is a ceo and she doesn't want to say well i did this and I did that, you know, just em expressing her achievements, so to speak, without feeling like, oh my God, I'm sounding as if, you know, I'm bragging or braggadocious mm -hmm. or anything like that. But if you don't celebrate your wins, who the hell else is gonna, you right, know? Right, right. How do you speak to that? Because there are women who are really timid. They, they've done a lot in their, in their realm, in their field, but they don't want to say, well, I did that. Yeah. How do you speak to that? Well, I think that there's some work to be done there. If that's kind of uh, how they feel, if they feel a little bit caved in, like, I don't want to sound like a prissy ass or I don't want to sound, Ooh, can I say that? <laughs> oh, okay, good. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, I don't, <laughs> Phew. Um, so I think it just really the bottom line there for me um, is who the question would be, who are you being as you're describing or as you are showing people your achievements, as you are saying your achievements, are you really saying it because you um, want to show off because you believe you're above or are you saying it because you want to inspire other people? When I label my achievements or when I announce, you know, things that I've achieved, milestones, really, it comes from a place in my heart to inspire others to let them know that that is possible so and there may be so, so i'm sorry so you're saying that they should create that intention correct the intention? yes correct so who are you being as you are proclaiming this or as you are um you know sharing this with others who are you being mm -hmm. what intention do you have behind sharing this 
you know, to other people. Again, for me, it's being of service. If I do say, you know, oh, I had, you know, an amazing launch or my business is in this state that it is in, um, X, Y, Z, whatever that may be, it's because I want to help other people and inspire them. And I think that depending on again, who you're being and what kind of energy you have as you're sharing your, your, yourself and your information, that will show and that passes on to other people as you communicate it in a certain way. And I appreciate what you said. And you know, you're still going to have the naysayers out there. Absolutely. Even though you might have come across authentically with that good intention, you're still going to have it being perceived by some other person out there like, Absolutely. oh, she's just bragging. You know, exactly. and that's just really speaking to their insecurities. Exactly. I have so learned that and I have so embraced that because yeah. I used to be susceptible to people's judgments and I used to take it real personally. Like, yeah. oh, you don't like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it used to bother me. Now I don't give a shit. Oh, you don't like exactly. me? Thank you. Yeah, oh, exactly. I like yeah. me, you know. <laughs> yeah. We have to be our best, our number one cheerleaders in order to inspire Absolutely. other people to follow our lead and not, not, not in an arrogant way, but to follow our lead in the sense of rising up to their potential, really bringing the light in themselves. As we do that and as we are okay with sharing that from a good place in our hearts, mm -hmm. I really do believe that other people feel it and will follow those footsteps. Absolutely. Inspire others to know that, hey, you can do this too. Absolutely. You know? Right. Yeah. Now, Carly, earlier on, you mentioned about being a mother. As a CEO, how do you balance that? That is something that kind of holds a lot of women back from climbing either the corporate ladder or the, even the entrepreneurial ladder. They're wondering, well, you know, I have to take care of home. And when I take my entrepreneur's hat off or my CEO hat off, I'm still mommy and I'm still honey. And I still have to cook the food and wash the dishes and all of that. How do you balance that? I mean, balance it to a point where it doesn't become overwhelming or stressing you out. Mm. And do, do you mean how do you balance doing the work with having children, or do you mean how do you balance being the two different roles? The two different roles. The two different roles. Mm -hmm. mm, that's a really good question. How do oh, you? Thank you. See, I, I think I'm very. <laughs> <laughs> For me personally, I don't really think about that kind of stuff. I just show up as a, um to whoever's there at the time. So this is just me personally. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm one person to my children and then another person showing up here. The way I am right now is the way I am to, to my children. And I see myself and people who I work with and who's in my programs and things like that, just, um, I don't see them as customers or as anyone. I just see them as people who are like me and who have been attracted to me and you know I, I have a playful energy with my kids I have a playful energy with other people in my life um so yeah I kind of just show up at how I feel inspired to at the time basically. oh okay so you have a you have a different approach to it what's yeah. your approach Janine because I know you're a wife and mother and CEO yes. and all that stuff you wear more hats than I do yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so the way I really would describe that balance is, um, first of all, I would say that it looks different for all of us, um, no matter how many similarities we may have in our lifestyle. If you have three kids, I have three kids, you have a husband, I have, you know, a husband. Um, it just really just looks different for all of us. So first of all, I would really say allow yourself to be okay with whatever your process and your balance is. Um, and it is a hard thing to come across. So the way I say that I would deal with that is really um, defining boundaries, like letting my children know. So my kids right now, they know that mom's at work, even though I'm at home and available to them. I let them know and I let my husband know, hey, I'm going to be busy blocking out times, letting them know um, what, I, yeah, boundaries, I think would be the right word where it's like, I'm here, mom used to work, but now mom works at home, it's going to look X, Y, Z, it's going to look different where I'm still here and you may think that you can come and, you know, nudge on my, on my sleeve and let me know what you need, but you can't from this period of time. And so I really just let them know that, um, I'm going to be in this role, again, this, you know, CEO role where mom's at home and she's the boss of her own business. Um, and really just for me, it looks like time blocking, 
in my schedule and really committing and being focused mm -hmm. with whatever it is that's on my schedule. And with that being said, also giving yourself permission that if you maybe didn't reach um, the five things listed, but you got to four, celebrate those four things and give yourself permission to pass that fifth thing on to the next day. Really just acknowledging yourself, celebrating yourself and putting boundaries um, with, you know, your loved ones, with people who you might always cater to people who your kids, your husband, you know, maybe your parents or other, other people in your life that are always expecting things from you. People who you always cater to say from this time to this time, that's mm -hmm. not going to be the case. Mm -hmm. That's how I deal with it. Well, I love that you guys have said that. And I love that you give the, the difference okay. between, you know, how you come, how you approach this subject matter, because a lot of women struggle with that. Yeah. A lot of women tend to not try to achieve because, oh, I, I don't want that kind of pressure. Yeah. Knowing that it, it just takes a certain amount of discipline. You yeah, know, absolutely. like you said, time management, creating the boundaries. And what I think it also does, it, it expresses to our loved ones, it expresses to our kids that their work is is defined or work is manifested or work is met, perceived in so many different ways mm -hmm. now the attitude towards work might not be dismal it might mm -hmm. be well i can't wait to go to work mm -hmm. you might be working for yourself you might be the ceo and creating opportunities as an employer for other people so yeah. it's a different dynamic a different perception because mm -hmm. i know here in the states they send you to college so that you could be a very good employee, you know, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes I think with the Aquarian age as it is now, and people are in their awakening stage and different perceptions of life and, you know, what am I doing here? And why should I have to do this? And the, the questioning, it, it, it brings about this kind of dynamic and it brings about this kind of realization that, yeah, okay. So I used to look at work like my grandparents, like, yeah, I got to go and hold the soil or, you know, yeah. work the machine or Very sit at the lazy. typewriter or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it seems mundane and routine and uh, my life isn't meaning anything. Now your life could have a totally different meaning because yeah. your attitude towards work is something totally different. Oh, I can do something that I really like and it's not work. Because mm -hmm. I love doing this. It's work, but yeah. I don't see it as work anymore. You know what right. I mean? I mean, right. getting to talk to you ladies all over the globe. What? Yeah. <laughs> so there's this, there's this whole momentum, what you just said right now, of my, um, my work, my, my message is my life pretty much. Like I mm -hmm. am my message and I live my message. And that is really just on the rise as I continue to, you know, interact and create more um, connections with these women, these, you know, entrepreneur, um, online entrepreneurs and every, every person, pretty much everybody that I've been encountering is like, my work is now my message, unless they're an employee, unless they're, you know, somebody who is, Taking Maybe they're orders. transitioning. Maybe they're the ones who are getting the inspiration from seeing us women doing right. the damn thing, crushing right. it and saying, oh. I think there's more of that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, there's more of us women inspiring others. And it's just like, we just have to reach the hand, you know, either from this way or this way and reach a hand and, you know, just unite together and inspire each other. But I think that's definitely um, something that is a big movement that's being created. And I know I want to be a part of that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Carly, so it brings us full circle. I, I mentioned, why is it that women are only representing like 5.8% of the global leadership, whereas there are over 500 million of us and we were saying that the environment might be male dominated, but women need to come together. Yeah. Can we have more of that, Carly? Do you think that that is possible where women are now starting to unite and create a united front so that girl power, let's move ahead, let's put on our stilettos and kick ass? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I, I think that's definitely the way that 
uh, the, the world is moving forward and especially as technology is evolving as well and, and making it easier for us to have these types of conversations and to get our message out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, think, I think that it's just, I think it's just, Red, I think there's going to be a, a huge change soon. I think there is going to be a huge shift. There's already shifts happening, and there's already, um, you know, there's been a lot of contrast. And I think it's just the residue of the past that's really just kind of clinging on. More women are stepping up now, and more women are finding, you know, and like when when people like us, when we shine our light, and even if you're not a, an entrepreneur or a, or a CEO, even if you are a mother, but you're achieving something, um, and and another way you know weight loss whatever it is if you're if you're stepping up and shining and being you know braggadocious and that uh, loving way about it well then you're you're creating that community you're creating connection you're inspiring people you're showing others what's possible but I'm very passionate about people actually um doing like stepping up and being more visible in their lives and really you know stepping into uh, uh the version of themselves that has and, and becomes everything that they want and inspiring everyone else to do the same, you know, rather than the comparisonitis thing. That's just, comparisonitis is just looking at someone and mm-hmm. seeing what's possible in you and not being able to handle it at that mm-hmm. time, not feeling like that you emotionally can connect with that. That's all that is. As soon as you go, well, I can have that too. Mm-hmm. Comparisonitis exactly. may be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I like, I like that. I like that because personally, I think that there's no such thing as competition. I think that there's collaboration that everyone, what they say, um, together, everyone achieves more as a team. So I, I firmly believe in that. And I really like what you just said, Carly. So now this brings another question to the forefront. So we spoke about those women who might be avoiding the ladder climb. What about the home dynamic? and your significant other and i'm i'm not trying to show partiality here because nowadays you know your sexuality brings you abound in all different spheres so Mm -hmm. whether it's your same sex or heterosex or multi-sex i don't care but your loved one the one to whom you share that space or with whom rather you share that space now there's there's that dynamic where it might not be that you're both CEOs. It might be that one is still in a, another position that might not be a CEO position. And you as the woman, now do you have to embark on a totally different vocabulary to kind of not make that, that person feel less than or feel insecure? Because I know I, I'm stepping back into where I mentioned how some women tend to have that masculine role you know because they have to compete or compete with other males in the environment so now do they take that home do they leave it they're supposed to leave it away but what if they don't how how does that manifest at home let's start there how does it manifest at home in their social relations their romantic relations where they're in this constant I, I, what they call those um, those actors that um, act the part? Um, what they call them? Um, oh, I can't remember it. So, in other words, if they're acting as Shakespeare, they're Shakespeare at home, at work. Method actors, yes, mm-hmm. like a method actor. You have to a- invoke that spirit, and you're you're that CEO all day. How does the communication get affected? Carly, you want to touch on that? And then we'll go to Janine. Yeah, sure. Well, I believe that how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you are focusing at um, your, say, your work and you're in a very masculine-dominated environment and you're feeling feelings of insecurity, of smallness, of not enjoying that male environment, then you're going to go home and, and... effectively those feelings are going to be residual they're going to be active within you so then you might go home and and find that you know your partner is shown things that aren't necessarily you know the same but it makes you feel the same way it might make you feel small it might make you feel like um you know you're not being heard or that you're not kind of on their level and i think it's important to just realize that if you can if you can unconditionally at work unconditionally validate yourself 
and put yourself forward as the role, whatever it is you want to be in the workplace, regardless of whether other people see you like that or not, then that's actually going to spill over into other areas of your life as well. Go back to the how you do one thing is how you do everything because the, the whole point here is that if you can be unconditionally confident, unconditionally empowered, unconditionally happy okay. at work, right? So you're not needing the conditions of, or, or you can kind of even just learn how to feel that way regardless of what's going on around you, then I think it can make for a much better um, and a much more enjoyable home experience because you're not being that stressed out person at work. You can ease your mind and you can feel more relaxed. And that's really what um, creation is about. It's about regardless of what your circumstances are saying to you, you still have the choice to feel a certain way. And, and if you're an entrepreneur and you're clients are doing your head in or something then still you know you still have the choice to go well you know I, I get to choose how I feel in this situation regardless of what's happening and I choose love I choose peace I choose calm I choose relaxation and then your your um, kids have a better mother your partner has a better mm. wife your brother and or your you know your siblings have a better sibling and you're just a, a more rounded person now I'm not saying that's easy but it's definitely worth um looking at you know it's worth finding techniques coping techniques so that regardless of where you are you're centered and you're you're strong within yourself I like that unconditionally unconditionally mm -hmm. like unconditionally be your authentic you yes. right yes <laughs> you don't need the conditions to change for you to be that person you're that person first, then the conditions change. Mm, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Would mm -hmm. you like to add to that, Janine? Yeah. Um, one thing that I absolutely agree with everything that Carly, you know, spoke on right now, it's really powerful. And, um, you know, just sharing this platform together with the both of you, I feel very supported in that sense of acknowledging, you know, it all starts with us first and then everything else will follow and or fall into place. Mm -hmm. um, one thing though that really I do want to shed light on with regards to um, you know communication at home, relationship at home with being the CEO person or personnel um, in my business, it was it was a lot harder for me at first with regards to my husband and communicating with him because I I was a little puzzled and a little bit all over the place when I first started this journey, as I really do believe a lot of us can agree. You know, when you start this entrepreneurial journey, yeah, it's a little bit all over the place. And so not knowing what to do with your damn self really affects your relationship and your communication with, uh, your husband in this situation or partner, right? That person, that loved one that you really have to work so hard at keeping a good relationship with. Um, now, uh, at the beginning of, you know, my entrepreneurial journey, our communication was definitely not where it is now. And what I really think helped that um, is not only what Carly just shed light on with, you know, making sure that you're authentic and true to yourself and you know where you're coming from and you have your stuff settled. So once I got a good grasp on myself, yes, that, that, um, completely bettered and it, it improved, uh, that being the communication with my husband and our relationship. But another thing really is identifying what your partner's needs are. So really, Boom. if if they are, um, you know, in a stressed out place in their own world, just really put a separation, um, just how they have to put a separation between their life and your life. And then there's moments where our lives can join. So I really have to identify like, those are his problems. And I really have to know how to deal with what he needs when he's going through that. What does he need from me? And what does me, Janine, need from him in my moments, right? So really knowing what to ask for and what their needs are um, is definitely key in making, you know, that, that balance or that communication enhanced is something really powerful. So I think it still comes right full circle because you mentioned at the beginning about creating the boundaries mm -hmm. and that's part of the boundaries, knowing, and especially knowing what your role is. If you know what your role is, you can stay in your lane. Once you stay in your lane, then everything should be fine. You know, and, and especially what Carly said, be that authentic person. So it, it stems also now into the esteem 
you know? Do you value you? Do you value what you bring to the world? Can you now say, well, you know, this is who I am. This is my representation of me and my gift for here. If you can acknowledge that, then others can actually acknowledge. I feel like I'm in a steam room. You see me sweating? No, you just look nice and shiny, but I can't see you sweating. I was like, girl, you got a good glow on you. <laughs> I'm trying to find the light to give myself the same glow. <laughs> can't really seem to get it. It must be the red. <laughs> oh, I love it. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But I, I really, I really appreciate the whole gamut that we've explored here today. So what, what in couple sentences what do you think would be now the and i know we we spoke of we touched on some of them but do you have anything else to offer as far as some solutions to make sure that that communication is harmonious with that woman who is a ceo harmonious not only at home but also at work you don't want her to be representative of you know this snotty emotional or oh, she's on her period or oh, she's just a bitch or you know because right. those are the tendencies for others to have those kinds of attitudes or perspectives about how we encounter or how we how we deal with a situation so to speak when yeah. you're in that leadership role so do you have anything else that you would like to add to form as a solution to make things a little bit more harmonious for women who are in that leadership position. Anyone? Um, yeah, I, I can. Um, I would really like to offer the idea, and this might sound a little woo-woo to some people, but being a little woo-woo is actually very helpful sometimes. Um, we're so all woo-woo. Exactly. Hello, we're woo -woo. all woo-woo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So I would really say that if you're feeling in a stuck position and you feel like you have to decide between, you know, being a better business CEO woman or being, um, you know, a more assertive kind of a business woman and your partner, if there's a conflicting um, balance there, if there's something that's just not right between the two very important, crucial um, situations in your life, I would really just say to sit down with some good old pen and paper and journal about how that is feeling to you and then how that is affecting your relationship. And I really do think that when you sit down and you just apply good old fashioned pen and paper, so many surprising, beautiful things come out of you that you don't know how to explain in words. But surprisingly enough, pen and paper will do the trick. And I really do feel that that right there is a release. Um, uh, that is one way, one exercise, something you can do as a gift to yourself and as a gift to your relationship. Um, and it might not take you more than about 15 minutes. I know a lot of times we think of this as like, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it later because we think of it as like a big task, but it is also rewarding and it does not have to take very long. I think once you do that, your communication can be different the next time around you come and talk to your partner. Um, and one other thing that has really helped me is writing a letter to my husband, you know, because when you're in the heat of the moment, when you're feeling misunderstood and when you're feeling seriously, like, why don't you get me? Like, why don't you understand me? Why am I not feeling heard right now? Again, because there's so much to balance between mm -hmm. having a healthy relationship and really making something work for yourself business, um, your business, when you're really trying to create this powerful life for you, it, it, it is a very, it's a rocky place sometimes. So one thing that has really helped me communicate to him is writing him a letter because you know, that right there is not going to be, uh, my dramatic voice in his face. It's going to be really my heart saying what it is that I really need to communicate to him in his own quiet space. Well, can I say something to that letter? Yes, please. So, so I did that with an ex. Notice okay. I said ex. I did that with an ex, and I, I was so upset, and I wrote that letter. And I'm, ah, oh. So he read it, and oh. he used it in another argument. Oh, oh. Hello? 
<laughs> that backfired. Okay. Yes. Well, notice that you missed step one. You missed step one. You didn't journal it out first, girlfriend. No, okay. I didn't. You just it all out. So that should have been, yeah, that should have been your own private. And then, and then once you've cleared the house a little bit, you know? <laughs> okay. So that is good for people what not to do, right? Right, Don't right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pass go. <laughs> yes, yes, and you did not, you did not collect $200. I did not, I no. did not. <laughs> oh, wow. Carly? I think what, what I was picking up from what Dream was saying, and I loved what she said. See, I'm actually a single parent. I, I me and my partner split up. Um, three years ago or something and a lot of it was actually to do with what um, you're talking about there was real communication problems but most of all uh, there is a there is a misalignment problem I had evolved past and I'm not saying I've evolved past him I had evolved past my current uh, circumstances with him I was on this journey of of personal development because as you know the starting your own business or being a CEO is is the best personal development journey you can go on and and you know you really do have to look at yourself and you really do have to become a different version of yourself for self so your children have to get used to that your partner has to get used to that like people have to adapt to that so I think it's just important to be kind to yourself to be kind to them and to really you know just always look at your priorities and just really figure out like what is it that's really important to me for me it actually was my, my mission and my purpose in life came above obviously the the relationship that we had and that's part of why that ended so um it really is and, and you're never stuck in a situation if it's miserable I mean I'm not saying leave your husband that's not what I'm saying but there's always options <laughs> like you don't have to stay unhappy you really don't so <laughs> Well, I really, really appreciate this conversation that we had today. I, I, I mean, we touched on so much. You know, we talked on boundaries. We touched on journaling. We touched on writing love letters. We touched on balancing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could go on and on and on because this is an ever-evolving situation, and especially since yeah. women are coming into their own Important. now. So, ladies, Absolutely. I yeah. want to say thank you for being here today. And look how the time has Woo! We've Quick, gone by. And you're having fun. It's it true. does. It, it really does. does. It does. Yeah. So that leads me now to the last five minutes. I want to kind of break it up so you guys have equal portions to talk about yourself, your business. Uh, why are you even doing what you're doing? And if you have any upcoming events and what your offering is. And I'm going to see if I can go back to the sharing of the screen. Oh, Heller. Heller. I'll share the screen and I'll go back to, we'll start with um, Carly. Carly, what is your, your offering? Tell us a little bit about Carly and then we'll go to Janine and then we'll go to me. Then I'll ask you for testimonials and then we'll say bye-bye. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. If you're interested to learn Carly, more, Carly, just talk, <laughs> baby. <laughs> take all the time you need, girl. Exactly. We are um, here. We're all ears. So, so my mission and what I'm really passionate about. I had uh, a life for a long time of struggle and of um, of dealing with depression and anxiety and it, suicidal thoughts. I was very, a very, very unhappy person and experienced a lot of struggle in my life. And then I went through this personal journey and this spiritual awakening and discovered that that empowerment, some of the things that I spoke about tonight, I really discovered that when I changed me and that when I transformed what happened on the inside, my life transformed so quickly and so mirac miraculously. Um, the ideas for my business started flowing, the money started flowing, you know, toxic relationships were removed from my life and just so many amazing things happened and I've created a freebie. It's actually not what's on that slide, Marcia, because I had a problem with my my, my website, but it's up now. It's just carlydawson.com forward slash ebook. And what I've given is an audio that just tells a little bit about my story and then three points, three powerful ways you can create your own reality 
by changing your internal world and um, plus a little ebook along with it as well. So I would love to offer that to any of your listeners. Um, there's no optimism required. They can just go and have a look. And I've got a 30 day program launching called 30 Days of Happy that I'm really excited about which teaches you the principles of law of attraction, of vibration, and raising your vibration for 30 days to really allow and receive what you want in your life. Oh, fabulous. I put it in the chat so Thank people you. can see it. I just yep. check and see if what I've put there is That's that, yep. correct. Forward slash ebook. Okay. Okay. Yep. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank well, that's, you. That's awesome. That's awesome. So see, you know, no matter where you are in your whole mental sphere, you can evolve and you can rise mm -hmm. above. Thank you for that, Carly. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. No and you have any upcoming events? Me? Yeah. Yeah, well, I was just in that. Well, I, my program's launching, which is 30 Days of Happy. So 30 that, Days. Yes, it's a very, it's a low investment and it's, um, it's something that I'm very proud of and that I'm actually working in a different way for this. I'm actually working and this is going to sound, you're talking about woo-woo. I'm going to tell you some woo-woo right now. <laughs> I'm actually uh, working in conjunction with Wayne Dyer and, I, and if you know him he's passed to the other side but I'm actually going to be channeling I'm already in communication with him and uh, some of my own loved ones have passed so I feel like this program's uh, a, a very special thing to me it's a very special um release that's coming so oh wow <laughs> oh wow Ooh. Yeah. you yeah. see what I mean I'm there's so many you. different gifts that we have to yeah. to give to the world yeah yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. And Miss Maceda. Yes, ma'am. Let me share um, the screen. Oh, so, should I mind it? Hold on, hold on. Okay. Yeah, sure. Why is this giving me hell today? Yes, here we go. <laughs> so here we go, Miss Janine. <laughs> yes. So for me, um, what my mission is really is to awaken women to be better leaders in their lives, mm -hmm. um, but for their children, really for the people that they are leading, really for um, just to have a better future. So my whole thing is be the woman you needed as a child, as a girl. Um, and I really have been striving to become a better women not to say that I'm better than my mom. I love my mom and I have a good relationship with her. However, I know that as a child, I did go through a lot of fear, a lot of things that I don't want. I don't say that I wish I wouldn't have gone through. However, uh, because I now believe that they have molded me into the strength and into the, the, the mission that I have today. However, there were a lot of things I think that could have maybe been a little bit different with regards to the leadership that I had in my mom. So I really want to help awaken women to be better, to really just live more powerfully because we are such amazing creatures, such amazing beings. Yes. And, um, we dim our own light. And so really to create this awareness that you have that power for yourself, nobody else, not your husband, not your mama, not your daddy, not nobody has this power to bring this light from within you, but you. So really to create that awareness in them. And um, so I went through like an identity crisis when I, you know, was in my early twenties and, you know, catering to everybody, being a good, a good daughter and being a good wife and a good mama and really just doing everything that I had to do and working full time and really trying to just make this work. I crashed. I emotionally crashed and I didn't know what the heck to do to myself or where to start finding my own light. And so it wasn't until like Carly, I went through this personal development, um, series, this personal development, um, uh, awakening that I have not stopped. I have not turned and so many more things are so much more graceful and powerful in my life because of it. Um, so really just helping other women awaken to that same power that they have. Um, and what I would like to offer, um, anybody listening, if they feel a little bit stuck, if they're not sure, um, how to proceed with, with a certain situation that they might be in, um, I'd like to offer a 45 minute complimentary. I call it unleash 
unleash your confidence breakthrough session. And really what I do is I get on the phone with you and I hear more about your journey, where you are and where you want to be. And I help you find that missing link, that in between to gain um, confidence, first of all, uh, but just to, to gain clarity and momentum toward how you should be thinking about your situation and what's going to help you move forward. Um, that is a complimentary session that I offer. And um, if you could please follow me as well on Facebook, because I do, I am launching a six week group coaching program. Dates are still to be D, but um, I'm going to, you know, set all of that today. I have to reach out to my assistant and just, you know, just set some, some dates um, for the near future where this group coaching program is going to be launched. And that is called magnetic confidence. So you could also look out for that. Wow. That is awesome. Let me awesome. bring back Carly's info. As I said, Carly is in Scotland and Janine is in the San Francisco Bay area. Yeah. So please feel free to reach out to any of these ladies. They're both Thank confidently you. living their dream, confidently manifesting, yeah. confidently challenge channeling. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> confidently, confidently creating. And it is so beautiful. Creating. That's yeah. right. Like, uh, like that. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I love what she even said about we dim our own lights. You know, that is so profound because it's so true, you know, yeah. So freaking true. Yeah, so ladies, us. I wanna, before I tell them who I am, I just want to ask you guys, what was your experience like here today? Super awesome. I mean, can I even say that? I mean, that sounded like so regular, but it just really was fun for me. And um, it doesn't feel like work. This is like amazing to be able to share these messages and be able to, you know, connect with these other faces that I have here in front of me so that we can unite, do that hand thing that I was explaining, right? Reach yes. out to the left, reach out to the right and really come together. And this is, it's such a powerful hour that we've had. Um, for me, it, it is, it is awesome, fun, um, enriching, rewarding. And I love to learn from you guys as well. Fabulous. So that means you'll be back. Oh, absolutely. Ooh, I'm coming back. Look, look out for my email. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Marcia, for this opportunity. You're amazing. You're welcome. And thank you for being here. Seriously. Yes. Thank you for being here. And what about you, Miss Carly? I've had a fabulous time. I've loved chatting with you ladies i've loved hearing both of your opinions and speaking about a subject that i don't normally speak about so this is actually you know raise a lot of awareness for me as well so very informative but it's been a lot of fun and you know i, I love connecting with women like yourself and just being able to uh, speak and, and have a platform like this to actually reach other people and mm. and share your story and, and maybe they can know that they're not alone and you know Absolutely. you know it's like well we're sitting here well why can't you sit here why can't you be the next one sitting here exactly. you know go for it exactly exactly letting them know that they are not alone you're not alone i'm not alone and neither are they you are not alone whoever's listening to me you are more we are more alike than we even imagine and yeah. that right there is a way to lift each other up so just please whatever it is wherever you are um, if you're feeling stuck, we've been there and we together can help pull you out, pull each other out faster than you can by yourself. Mm, love we've been there. We've done that. And it's so enlightening, enriching. Um, mm -hmm. I love the fact that you mentioned it. And as parents, we know that we rear kids. We raise our children to be better or live better lives than, than we, we did. Were. Absolutely. Right. So it's so funny that you mentioned about, you know, your mom and that you're not blaming her and all that. It took me a while to come to that kind of reality yeah. and, and not blaming her and not, because even though I had my mom and my dad, my mom separated from my father mm -hmm. and I was raised by a single woman, but not necessarily because I would always be interactive with him. But the long and the, the long and the short of it is that there were certain situations that came to my experience, I was almost molested by her boyfriend, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind of traumatized yeah, me. Absolutely. And the simple fact that I 
married a man who later physically abused me. That kind of traumatized me too. And it did a lot for repressing my esteem. It did a lot for making me feel as if, you know, I wasn't worth it. Oh, nobody loves me. So promiscuous, I wouldn't say I was promiscuous. I was, I was smart about my promiscuity because I would not sleep with them, but I would date all over the place, you know? The attention. And, and, yeah. And, and it, it brought a lot to the forefront when I finally took a lot, it took a lot of training. It took a lot of counseling sessions. It took a lot of everything yeah. to bring me back to my six year old self because I was always energetic and kick, 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 all of that. But you know, after you go through a certain amount of trauma, it kind of diminishes everything, okay. dim your own light kind of thing yeah. and making yeah. you feel like, you know, well, what's the sense? Yeah. Well, hell no. Yeah. I woke up and, but I woke up and I was angry. I was angry at, I was angry at him. I was angry at my mom. I was angry at my dad. And, but, but, but not so much my father. I always held him in a high esteem. And it took a while for me to come to the realization that, you know, all these things you were supposed to go through because they're learning experiences to make you the authentic you that you are, you know? So it took me a while to get to that point. And there might be women out there who are experiencing all levels of trauma and not really know how to deal with it. Well, just take it, shift your perspective and take it as a learning experience. That's, that's my word to that. And mm -hmm. I created Swell not saying that I'm a psychologist or anything, but I love fun. And I think that you can impart a lot of nuggets of knowledge. You can impart a lot of experiences that inspire when you're having fun. Absolutely. And people will say, you know, huh, that was my takeaway. Huh. You know, and, and because of that, I know that I wasn't the only one who went through that detour of dysfunction. There are a lot mm -hmm. of women out there who are doing it. So yeah. for us women to unite, I was taught that don't trust another woman. Don't you trust another woman? So I know I oh. wasn't the only one taught like that. A lot of West mm -hmm. Indian parenting, that's part of their parenting. Don't trust women. Don't trust this one. Don't trust that one. Well, we can trust each other. Yeah, And absolutely. that's part of the reason why I developed S-W-E-L-L because women have to come together and know that we are in a sisterhood and for 12 weeks when that egg and that sperm connect we're all female we're all female for the first 12 weeks and then after that you know we grow into our own being but to know how powerful we are and, and to know that it's not their fault to know that whatever it was that our parents did or didn't do it's just to make us better for our evolution so you know that's my little spiel and mm -hmm. as the creator of s-w-e-l-l -L, sexual wellness and empowered living lifestyles i i i wish for women to embrace sex not as a tool but just to embrace it without fear there's some women who oh sex oh, oh you talk about it's sex. taboo yeah it's so taboo yeah, yeah. And, and it's so, it, it delves into that fear that doesn't need to be. And when you get around other women who talk freely and energetically about it, they're like, oh, you must be a slut. Mm -hmm. No, girl, yeah. you better get with the program. So that's why I brought that to the forefront. You know, Swell is all about empowering women, letting them know that you can unleash your inner sexual goddess and your sensuality because you are powerful. So getting Absolutely. them to get to that realization so that you don't just exchange your DNA because, oh, I'm scared to be alone. Oh, I have to go and jump into bed with this one. No, you can be by yourself and be all that and then some. You yeah, know? absolutely. I love it. I, what I pick up from that, um, Marcia, is security versus insecurity, right? So you offer the security of self, of yes sexual self sexualness and that is beautiful that's so empowering it's so important to have that part nailed down yeah yeah and so also the, the sexual energy is a as a super um what sort of looking for like Potent. yes yes 
it's a very potent energy and Woo! in conjunction with creation so um things like um visualizations as your you know listen to me kind of say but like you know as you're masturbating or uh yeah. things like that it's very powerful so when you can channel your sexual energy as well plus the empowerment it gives you i think you just represent and shine that so well like <laughs> you both do it really. that's Powerful. awesome yeah <laughs> well well that's isn't isn't point. isn't that something that they talk about in think and grow rich you transmute your sexual energy mm-hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely i right. read that book it, it's been yeah. a while i have to revisit it but they do definitely mention yeah it. yeah so ladies i thank you i thank you i thank you for sharing this time and space with me today and with thank our audience you. this will be rebroadcast rebroadcast it oh say that 10 times fast later <laughs> on tonight on the regular time for the speaker mc show which is at 9 p.m eastern on monday and I, I had a wonderful, wonderful time speaking with Carly Dawson and Janine Macedo. And we spoke about She's Your Boss and the woman who is just encapsulating all of that CEO boss attitude and communicating and all that. So yes. thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And audience, I hope that you received value here tonight. <clears throat> And check us out next week, not next week, but on the 26th, where our next show will be talking about spillage. How do you separate the home life and the work life and not have them collide? Yeah, so stay tuned for that show. As Maya Angelou says, people will never remember what you said. People will never remember what you did. But people will always remember how you made them feel. And I hope we made you feel real good tonight. So until then, see you. This is the Speaker MC Show. Good night. Uh